This programme is brought to you by UCL, London's global university. The new areas in the Science Library have been incredibly popular and we were able to take what was essentially a storage space for older journals and create a new lively learning space that's really heavily used. The first thing we noticed when we opened these spaces uh, at the end of the summer 2009 is that a lot more students are using the library than came here before. In the first four weeks of October we looked very carefully at the user statistics and we saw that whereas uh, last year the peak number coming into the building was around 3,000 a day, that was the building at its busiest. Uh, this year the peak number is 6,000 students a day and they're all coming in to use these spaces because they meet the requirements of the curriculum and it, it enables students to learn and to study in the way that they want to learn and they want to work together. So we have reinvented what a science library looks like. It's an IT-enabled collaborative space, open 24 hours a day at certain times of the year, so that students are at the centre of the learning experience and can use all the various tools that we make available to them uh, to further their study and their uh, career. What we've been able to do with the funding is adapt some of our spaces to respond to changes in the curriculum and changes in the way students are learning and in the way their work is set. So particularly in some departments there is a lot of project work they're expected to work in groups and the space in the library is primarily for silent individual study. So what we've been able to put in, particularly with the group study pods, is space that students can book. They can go in in groups of between three and up to eight. Use that space to work on their projects. They've got IT to kit it out with plasma screens, whiteboards, and they, so they can work through these collaborative projects and um, it's been very, very successful. As part of the project we did introduce a new system for borrowing and renewing books using RFID, Radio Frequency Identification Technology. Students are now able to borrow and return their own books. This means the time that they can borrow books has extended greatly. It used to be just when we had staff there, now it's almost all of the time the library is open and um, that's been a huge benefit. Um, we've also reduced queues and we've been able to free up staff so they can spend more time actually helping students find resources and find the information, so it's been a really big help. But increasingly we're able to deliver digital material to the user as well, so they can read paper and they can look at digital materials side by side. So that's one big change because now the student has even greater expectations of what a library can provide, both in the digital world and in the paper world. Well, we're very pleased with the way that the first phase of the development here on the ground floor has worked because we've been testing a concept. We call it the learning laboratory and it's a learning laboratory in, in a couple of senses. First for the students so that they can work together in a collaborative environment. But it was also a laboratory for the library where we were testing a new idea because the provost challenged us to reinvent what the 21st century science library would look like. I think we have done that here today with the new development that you see on the ground floor and we've got a blueprint for what the rest of the library should look like and in coming years we will seek to remodel the upper floors of the building along the lines of the very successful pilot we've introduced here on the ground floor. So the best is yet to come because at the end of the whole process the whole building will look like the ground floor with quiet study areas for those who want to study uh, singly in, in a quiet environment but increasingly with more group study areas and more project areas because that's the way that the science curriculum is delivered here in UCL.
To find out more about UCL, please visit us at itunes.ucl.ac.uk. Thank you.